thanks a lot uh, for having me uh, today. Uh, this is my first event in Turkey, <laughs> Turkey, uh, even though it's remote, but uh, next time I, I'll be here uh, physically with you. Uh, so I hope you're all doing fine. Uh, my goal today is to, to speak uh, about uh, machine learning. Uh, but what's weird, I'm speaking about machine learning, but I'm not an expert. So that's a bit weird, but uh, I hope uh, you'll understand why. Uh, so quick um, presentation. Uh, my name is Laurent Picard. Uh, by my accent, you can tell uh, that I'm French. Uh, I work uh, with uh, Google Cloud. Uh, I've been working uh, with them for four years now, almost. And before that, uh, in a previous life, uh, I was an ebook pioneer uh, for 17 years. So. Uh, in 1999, for instance, we made the first uh, ebook reader uh, in Europe. It was uh, like a big iPad, but before the iPad in 1999. Okay, so let's move on. So this is the, the quote I love, uh, and uh, that very much represents uh, what I feel uh, and still feel after a few years uh, when I see something new developed with machine learning, uh, magic. Magic, uh, but you know, uh, this is not magic. This is just technology. You scratch a little bit the surface and it's technology and you all know technology. So my goal today is to show you, even if you're not an expert, that you can use machine learning different ways and maybe build smarter solutions thanks to machine learning. Uh, and hopefully also uh, uh, may, that may give you a, a few ideas. So, uh, what is machine learning? So this is my own definition of machine learning after a couple of years. Uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, for me, machine learning is you have data uh, as, an, as input, right? And from this data, you want information. You want to extract information. You want to understand what's in your data, maybe uh, do prediction, maybe get uh, specific insights. Um, so that's my definition. But it's a bit wrong. The real definition is that uh, machine learning is actually a part of AI, right? That, you know that. And uh, in particular, we are mostly speaking about deep learning, which is a, a subset of machine learning. Now the, the, the term machine learning is, is catching on, so I will mainly uh, use machine learning uh, as a term, but experts use uh, deep learning. So what is machine learning? How does it work? Um, so it started 40 years ago, and researchers at the time tried to mimic the way uh, they thought and we think still uh, our brain works. Um, it is uh, using examples. And you, if you think about it, this is how we learn. Uh, we think uh, uh, as kids, we see our parents, we see our friends, we see our family, uh, our teachers, we see examples and, and we learn from that. We extract information, we memorize, we learn, maybe we try, but uh, new examples, but we learn from that. And this is uh, what uh, machine learning is doing. It is learning from examples. And the magic, the magic is that uh, we now manage to solve problems thanks to machine learning, problems that we couldn't solve before or badly with uh, algorithms. Right? So that's the magic, and I, I, I feel, really, truly feel that, that magic. Um, how can you, how can we developers benefit from machine learning today? Um, if you are an expert, then you know how to deal with neural networks, you know how to build them, uh, but I hope you'll, you'll learn a couple of things uh, in, in the, the next slides. Um, if you have developer skills, then, there's a first way, which are the machine learning APIs. So these APIs are existing pre-trained machine learning models. They have been trained most of the time, been trained most of the time on millions of samples. Uh, and they are state-of-the-art models. You can use them through an API, uh, a web API, sometimes an embedded API on Android and so on, on a, on a browser. And there are models ready to use. And in between expertise and APIs is a new field called AutoML uh, that is uh, very much uh, pushed by, by Google. Uh, I think the term AutoML now is uh, starting to catch on also and is becoming uh, like a standard. And with AutoML, you're going to be able to build your own models, your machine learning models, without any expertise. And that's filling a big gap because 
all developers cannot be data scientists. It's impossible. And my goal, so in this presentation, my goal is to show you these building blocks so you know they exist, so you have an idea of what they can do and maybe uh, let you integrate uh, them into your solutions. So let's start uh, with the machine learning APIs. Um, so if you remember my definition, you have data um, as input. So the, the data can be uh, images, videos, text, or even speech. And from that, you extract information. And sometimes this information, so your output, is your input that has been transformed into a more in intelligible way. You can uh, better process or understand uh, your output than your input. So those are, uh, this is the machine learning API family uh, that you can find on Google Cloud. Uh, I like to start with the vision API because uh, as a student, so that was in the last century in the in the 90s, uh, as a student, I, I was working on teachers and uh, I was trying to understand with uh, my teachers how to understand what was in the picture. And at the time, the only way we had or ID we had or what was kind of working was using image processing and detecting edges. And from the edges, we could kind of get an ID or trying to find objects in the in the picture. So it kind of worked, but as soon as we would use a new picture, then it just failed miserably. So machine learning is the solution uh, for a few years now, and, and that's the magic again. So if you give a picture to a vision, uh, to the vision API, it will describe it to you with labels. So, so this is an example of a picture from, from New Zealand. And here it tells me that this picture is about nature. Uh, most likely they are flowers. And this is the JSON response that, that I can get, okay? More precisely, so this is the same picture, but I change it. So it's a picture I got from the web. I changed it, I zoomed in, cropped it, flipped it, and changed the colors. Here, the vision model is still able to match this picture with something that uh, exists on the web. And from that, is able to give me the location of this picture. And that's right, this is Hobbiton. This is where the Lord uh, of the Rings movies were shot. Uh, and so it means you can even get the precise uh, GPS location. More precisely, if there are objects, people or uh, objects in uh, the picture, you will know, you will get the bounding boxes. So like here, so I guess the cast here was in a restaurant. And here I get bounding boxes for the different uh, persons here, even in the back here, uh, I get bounding boxes for the pants the tops and even even the, the uh, ceiling lamp here, okay? Still, even more precisely, if there are faces, it will give you the location of the faces, uh, even the location of the different features. So where is the nose, the mouth, and so on, and try to detect generic emotions. And so in this phase, uh, we're told that we're being told that uh, most like uh, not, not most likely yeah likely this face is angry and as you know <laughs> Gollum is uh, always angry so it, it works here uh, every time you get a, a confidence or so a score to to know whether you can trust very well or if you should be cautious about the results you even get a, a few more um, results like the position of the head in 3d uh, if the picture is blurred, uh, if the face is wearing a hat or something uh, on the head. So you can understand what's in the picture. But if you have text in the picture, it also works. So that's OCR. Uh, maybe you heard that uh, uh, during the first talk. OCR, optical character recognition. So many companies have worked on that uh, for decades. Uh, it kind of worked uh, pretty well. But still, it was still making a few mistakes. Um, and machine learning, again, is solving this problem. So it's fully solved. If I give this screenshot to uh, the Vision API, I get different results. I get uh, a high-level blocks, so like uh, paragraphs. 
I get uh, blocks for the different sentences, blocks for the different words, and even blocks for the different symbols. And of course, I get this, the text transcription here. And it is making no mistake at all. Uh, it is perfect. So uh, also one thing I, I like very much to try is see the limits of the model. So if I take this same screenshot and put a perspective effect on it, it is still working uh, perfectly, uh, not making mistakes. So the next step, so this is uh, type written text. The next step is that now the Vision API also works on handwriting. So this is a, a piece of paper from uh, from uh, Tolkien himself, who wrote his uh, famous uh, quote for the Lord of the Rings. And here the Vision API is able to uh, transcribe uh, this handwritten text. Of course, it's a, a lot harder problem. So here, for instance, I would like, I would have preferred to have the attached with Lord of the Rings uh, we can we can understand that. Uh, so the vision model, not yet, but almost. Uh, and yeah, it's making one mistake here, uh, missing for shadows. Uh, it read uh, a V instead of a W. Uh, but it's almost it's very very, very a very very good result. Uh, uh, very amazing given the the difficulty of of the task. What is the limit? Uh, it's the human limit. If a human is not able to read the text, then the machine learning as of today uh, model will not be able to read it either. Uh, maybe the limit is uh, um, a piece of paper, a text written by a doctor, uh, you know, uh, so that's a joke in, anyway in France. Uh, doctors, they write uh, prescriptions, so now they print them, uh, but some still write them and they can't re read them themselves back. So, so that's the limit, okay? And finally, if there's some, something famous or someone famous in the picture, uh, the Vision API, API is able to tell you so. So here I've taken a picture again that I've transformed. I zoomed in, uh, cropped it, and changed the colors. So there's not any pixel in common or, or very specific area. Uh, uh, so it's coming from something existing. And the Vision API is able to match it with the picture I've used from a Spanish newspaper. So this is a very rare picture uh, that has been used only once, and it does work. It tells me that this picture is about Tolkien, uh, and that's true. And what I love here is that for the web entity, I get an identifier. This ID perfectly, perfectly identifies Tolkien, GRR Tolkien. If it was uh, Tolkien, Christopher Tolkien, the son, then I would get a different ID. So you see, you can really understand what you have in, in pictures. I've told you it's an API that you, you can use uh, um, with a web request, but actually, uh, if you don't want to, to work uh, in, in JavaScript, uh, there are client libraries that you can use. And I'm pretty sure here that you will find one of your favorite languages. So in my case, uh, currently, this is Python. So here in this code sample, it's always the same principle. You create a client, you uh, create, you provide the input. So here it's a picture. So here you give the URI of the picture, for instance, and you call the feature you want, face detection. And then in something like one second, you get the answer. Uh, you get all the faces with the bounding boxes, with the, the, the sentiment that has, the, the, the emotion that has been uh, detected. So you see, it's very, very uh, easy to use. I've used that for my first demo that we'll do a bit later. Uh, and it took me two hours to integrate that into, into a demo. So it's very, very easy. Now, the Video Intelligence API. So it's basically the same, but with one more dimension, time, right? A video is pictures uh, in time. So you can extrapolate uh, the features, um, but with the, the additional dimension with time, uh, it also means that you can get, you can detect the different sequences within the video. So it means that here, for instance, the video intelligence API is able to tell me that at this segment, this location, this sequence, there is a polar bear. And if you ask for object tracking, then you will get the location of the bear and you will track it. Uh, you will know exactly where the bear uh, yes, and if there are a few of them, uh, then you will track the different objects. Okay. 
Once again, with the client library, it is very easy to use. The same principle. If, I, if you want to track object, you create uh, a client. You specify the features you want. So for instance, object tracking. You can specify if you want to work on the whole video or just on some specific segments. And you call annotate video. It takes a bit more time than for a picture, of course, because it depends on the length, the duration of your sequences or, or of the, the whole video, if you, you want to analyze the whole video. But after that, you have your results. So here, I have written uh, this code lab, this tutorial. And, and from this tutorial, uh, I'm, I've been able to, to do that uh, and extract, uh, track this uh, uh, insect. And, and do a small animation out of it. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, I will give you the link to this presentation at the end, uh, so you will have everything. Don't worry about taking a screenshot or, or, or anything, okay. Next, after pictures and videos, text. So once again, this is a very, very big field. Um, it's called NLP, Natural Language Processing. So like OCR, it's a big field or vision, um, computer vision. NLP is a very big field, maybe the first one uh, on which uh, experts work to try to understand what's in a text, to understand uh, text. And once again, machine learning is solving this problem very, very nicely, providing better results than previous algorithms. So uh, another example with Tolkien, if I give this sentence, but it can work on, a whole book almost, or paragraphs, uh, big corpuses of text. If I give this sentence uh, to the natural language API, first I know uh, which language it is written in, uh, so English here, and I can get the syntax of uh, uh, the different uh, sentences. I can know the nouns, the verbs, and all the different uh, natures and, and types of uh, items, including the punctuation, that's uh, very often some, something that was not taken uh, into account uh, by, uh, by gram grammarians. Um, and one thing that I love is that you can also ask for lemmas. So for here, there's one. You can get to be, the verb to be, where in your text you had was. So it means you can work with canonical forms, the lemmas of your nouns and verbs. Uh, so that's pretty cool. From the same piece of text, you can, like in pictures, try to detect entities. So here, the entity detection is based on classes. So here on this sentence, I get three different types, three different classes. In red, uh, we have persons. Tolkien is a person, of course. A writer uh, is a person, a poet, a philologist. A professor is a, an author is a person. Uh, and maybe you'll notice that I get also something very, very cool, is that here I get the same ID about Tolkien that previously uh, when I had a picture with Tolkien on it. So it means I can maybe work on the same entities in pictures and in text. That's something pretty cool. British is mapped, is uh, uh, related to the United Kingdom, so it's mapped here uh, to a location. And at the end, in yellow, uh, the three books are mapped as works of art, which is also uh, uh, the best result, a great result. Um, basically, an, an entity is something or someone famous that you can find on the web, and very often it has a Wikipedia page. So this is why in the results you can very often find Wikipedia URLs, OK? And finally, uh, with the natural language API, you can ask for classification. You can ask, OK, give, tell me uh, how I should classify this piece of text or this whole corpus. Um, and here, uh, the natural language API tells me that I, it should be classified under books and literature at 97%. And that's perfect. So we are getting very, very great results on NLP. Um, and this is used by companies. Uh, for instance, uh, it's used by uh, the New York Times. They have uh, legacy uh, uh, centuries of articles uh, that uh, 
decades, uh, oh yeah, almost centuries, um, decades of uh, legacy articles that, of course, were not written on computers at the time. Um, and from the scans, they can uh, analyze, they can classify the articles, they can understand what's in there. Okay. And finally, like in pictures, if you remember the, the emotion detection, uh, from text, you can try to understand uh, the sentiments that uh, that are present in the text. So to illustrate that, I've taken two articles. Uh, the first one is positive, uh, is from the New York Times, uh, back in the days when The Hobbit was released. And the second one is a more recent review, a very negative one. And when you give uh, the two different articles or two different reviews uh, to the, uh, the NL API, you get uh, per sentence or per level of text, it depends on you, you get everything, you get a score between minus one and plus one. And it describes uh, how negative or positive is uh, the, the sentence, for instance. So these sentences come from Pauline's review, who hated the book. OK, uh, nobody can. Uh, <laughs> love the same stuff. Uh, you of course get a lot of uh, neutral uh, sentences or, or pieces of text uh, in the results because, in general, we are we are more uh, neutral than positive or negative. And finally, these sentences do come from the positive review of the New York Times. So it, it works pretty well. And and once again, you can know the confidence uh, by the level uh, of uh, this score. This is uh, used by companies. Uh, if you are able to understand how positively or negatively we talk about your company, about your products, then it means you can have some kind of intelligence and be more efficient. You can browse tweets uh, and know whether we talk positively about your products or negatively and react, maybe uh, be uh, communicate and answer back quickly uh, when something is very positive or very negative, some companies are browsing their customer emails and they uh, treat negative emails in priority to be more efficient, to try to solve problems faster. A very positive emails can wait a couple of hours more, right? Uh, to be read and to have a nice answer, but someone who is very angry maybe needs a faster answer. Um, once again, uh, in Python, but uh, it's available in the different languages. Um, how to use the, the, the NL API, you create a client, you provide a document uh, that can be in text or HTML. And you, if you want to do sentiment analysis, you call analyze sentiment. And then you have the results very quickly that you can use right away here. OK, so once again, I've written a, a code lab here that if you are familiar with the code labs, those are tutorials that you can use and follow uh, so all of them, you can you can uh, follow the tutorial uh, in Cloud Shell. So still on text. So I, I, I will go uh, quickly on this one, uh, the translation API. So you have, uh, I, I would bet you have all used at least once in your life Google Translate somehow. Um, and so this is how it works. So um, uh, it, the input is any uh, or almost any uh, uh, language uh, text. Um, there are over uh, 100 uh, different languages that, that you can specify, and then you specify the, your target language, the output that you, you, you want to get your translation in. Uh, so that's thousands of different combinations. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I like to share something um, because I discovered that uh, when I started to work at Google. Uh, in 2016, so four years ago, uh, almost, at, uh, yeah, almost exactly four years ago, I think it was in October. Um, I was using Google Translate uh, and four years, and I was not working uh, with, with Google. So I was just a simple user of Google Translate. I was translating uh, Asian, Chinese, and Japanese texts into English or French, and it was working okay. Um, you could you could tell the, the 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 issues because the translation was okay, but there, there were a few mistakes. And one day, uh, four years ago the quality was a lot, lot better. So, OK, at the time, I was happy and didn't uh, bother. <laughs> but uh, since I've been working with Google Cloud, uh, I learned that actually uh, four years ago, Google switched 
from a statistical model to a machine learning model. And what's amazing see, I, is that I could tell just by using the product, just by using it. Uh, and once again, algorithms, simple algorithms, fine-tuned, made by humans, uh, are now we are, we are now getting better results with machine learning models than algorithms that, that we fine-tuned before. Uh, and the quality is very high. So of course, it's not the same quality as a professional translator, but Every, almost every day, uh, it's getting better and better. So why? It's also uh, one specific of um, machine learning models is that as they learn from examples, if there are issues, you can, you can input, give new examples, more examples, better examples, counter examples, and then the model gets better with time. So that's one of the cool stuff is, and now uh, Google Translate for four years has just kept being better and better. And, and the translation is just amazing. If you want to use it um, uh, in your favorite language, it's actually, I think, only two lines. <laughs> there are more comments than everything. Uh, translate client, you, you, you create the client and you call translate and that's it. And you can use the, the translation right away. Okay, so we've spoken about everything that you can see, everything that you can read, and now uh, speech. So this is once again uh, a field where uh, experts uh, have been working carefully, fine tuning, working on phonemes. Uh, so if you remember, I told you I work in, uh, we released uh, 20 years ago, the first ebook reader at the time. Um, uh, I worked with uh, text to speech engine and I, I, I was trying to, to work with speech. And at the time, companies were working with phonemes, and the best of them may, maybe have phonemes. So they had they, 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 are, they, are, they had their techniques to to deal with speech. Now, machine learning once again is is solving uh, these problems quite nicely. So the first one, if you speak, uh, the speech to text API is able to transcribe your speech into text. And if you're able to understand or transcribe speech, so it means like before for videos, you can index everything. You can understand exactly uh, what you have in your audio. And it works at the level of every word. You know exactly, uh, you get the timestamps of every word in, in your stream. Uh, so this is another code lab I've written. Um, you create a client, you call recognize uh, with some, uh, with the configuration. And here, if you try this code lab, you will hear me uh, pronounce a French poem, a French poetry, a very famous one. And it actually gets translated, Maître uh, Corbeau sur un arbre caché, and so on. And, okay. and, and with a high confidence. You have many different options. Uh, one of the coolest ones uh, since uh, I think it's two years now is that you can ask for punctuation. So this is a pretty hard feature from speech to be able to put punctuation in, in the sentences. Okay. And now the opposite. Uh, you, you have text and you want uh, to, to get the text, uh, the, uh, the speech transcription uh, from, uh, from your text. So uh, this is a problem that has been solved by DeepMind uh, a few years ago. And uh, it is the most, I have to admit, I'm a bit jealous because I love the Vision API, but I have to admit that this is the most advanced machine learning model of the family because it's able to, in one second, it's able to generate 20 seconds of speech with WaveNet. So this is the name of the technology, WaveNet, uh, with WaveNet voices, and they sound very, very natural. It's like someone talking to you very pleasant to hear. When I did that 20 years ago using a text-to-speech engine, nobody used uh, the feature because it was a robot talking to you. Uh, so it's really, really amazing. Uh, and this is the what you have with the Google Assistant or what you have on your, if it's Android, your smartphone. Um, okay, uh, I can't share the, the audio right now, but I'm going, going to, sh to do you a demo as you can hear me. Okay, let's go on uh, google.com. Okay. And let's, uh, I switch to English, but, or, or let's try, some of you speak French, so let's try it maybe. Uh, I'm going to speak, 
speak French with an eg- English uh, accent. So let me, yeah, uh, I will try that uh, to, to see the result. Quelle est la température à Paris? And I'm, I'm hearing uh, the, the, the result uh, with the text to speech uh, API. So here, I hope you could see, but what happened is that in real time, my voice was transcribed into text. And in real time, so it means when I started to pronounce temperature, it recognized something else. But at the end, the sentence is perfect. And it was not proper French. Uh, I spoke with an English accent in French. But still, it worked <laughs> perfectly. So it means that the, the, this uh, speech to text model is as understood the essence of speech is able to 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 understand really what, what i'm pronouncing and uh, getting re- rid of uh, accents uh so this is once again something that that, that I, I find uh, pretty magical okay and to use that uh, this is another code lab i've written uh here with these few lines you can generate uh mp3s or wave no, wave files uh with different uh, english or or French or German. Uh, I, I don't remember about, about Turkish. Uh, I, I, sorry, I didn't check before. Uh, but in, in these few lines, you can generate uh, any speech, almost. So you've seen what you can do with existing machine learning models. Uh, you can do uh, cool stuff. But in some cases, uh, that will not be enough for you. That will not work. So let, let me show you this example. Um, if I give these two pictures to the Vision API, I get the same results because basically I have clouds in a sky. It's almost the same results. But if I would want to do a forecasting um, application, for instance, I want to understand that here I have a Cyrus and here an Alto Camelus, and here I'm going to get good weather and not in the other cases maybe, then I'm stuck. Uh, I need something more. And this is where you can use AutoML. If you cannot solve your problem with the existing APIs, then you can maybe solve it with AutoML. And the way it works is the following. You need, this time you need to work a little bit more. You need to create a data set. And this data set, data set is actually examples. If you remember the, de- the definition, you need examples. You create the data set and then you launch the training and everything is automated. Very often you do a first training to get an ID of how well the data set is, you realize that's every time it's my case, I realize that I've made a few mistakes in my data set. I fix them. A couple of iterations, and then I launch a longer training. I'm happy. And they, then I have my own API, like the APIs that you've seen, but this is my own private API that I can use for my own solutions to solve my own custom problems. Uh, and the way it works is you can do a cloud model, and in this case, you have an API, and you can you can do live uh, predictions, live uh, transcriptions, uh, live uh, detections, or you can also do batch. Uh, you can provide batch payloads um, if you don't want to do it in real time. But you can also train an edge model. So the edge model is a bit smaller, but you'll be able to export it and get it to run in a Docker container, for instance, or uh, in a mobile app with a, the TensorFlow Lite export, or also you'll be able to export it as a TensorFlow JS model. So it means it can run in a web page, can run offline once it's downloaded. Okay. So in the with the cloud example, what you need is uh, pictures of clouds. You need to label them. So here, this is classification. This is um, image detection. You, you, we want to make the difference between the different types of clouds. So you do that. You launch the training, as I said. And uh, so this is the first training I did, one compute hours. And I realized there were a few mistakes. And then I did a longer uh, training, three hours. And then I get a very good uh, model uh, after that. It's fully automated. So if you remember, I, I'm not an expert. I'm just a user. I've been using machine learning for years. To evaluate um, an image classification problem uh, uh, model, sorry, uh, you can use this tool, the confusion matrix. And here you see that it's doing greatly with the cumulus and so on. But 
badly on the alto cameras because half of the pictures, the test pictures, are not well recognized. So here, uh, very often it means that either you don't have enough samples for this label, or maybe you have the same amount of samples, but they all look uh, the same. They all look alike, right? So this is also a way to see and improve your data set. And once it's done, you can use your API. And here, yeah, it means you can directly upload uh, pictures here or send uh, pictures in batch mode and you get predictions. And here at 97%, there is a cumulus in this picture and that's great, there is one, okay? And so this is for pictures, but like the, the, the machine learning family uh, as of today, and it's still, it just keeps evolving. It works on pictures, videos, text and also data, uh, databases, CSV files. And from that, you can get uh, specific uh, features. You can do custom classification. So that's what you've seen with the clouds. You can do custom object detection. If you want to track objects, uh, sorry, if you want to detect objects in a picture, but you can also do custom classification and, and soon maybe in beta, uh, uh, custom object detection in videos. And likewise, you can do your custom translations, uh, custom entity detection in text. And, and one big field is also you can do predictions on data without being a data scientist. So I've made the demo. I hope you, you'll be able to all participate. This de the demo is the following. I want to detect how you're feeling. So you're not in front of me, uh, but you're going to use um, uh, your smartphone if you'd like send me a selfie and in the first uh, test, I will use the vision API to detect generic emotions. And in the second one, I've made an auto ML vision model with pictures of myself, my teammates, and also uh, attendees from pre previous talks who gave uh, their authorization. And I'm now able, hopefully, to detect people with the tongue out, people yawning and people sleeping. Okay, and we're going to try that all together. Okay, um, you will find in uh, you will have a, a look in the slide uh, about uh, sorry the way the way it works. So I am uh, giving you this uh, QR code. I give you a moment to get connected. Okay, maybe I will wait for ten seconds. You can also maybe I will give you uh, the URL in the in the chat. So that's this one. Okay, and uh, come back to the to the QR code, and you can also type bit.ly/mldeffest20 in your browser. Okay, if you go there, you should reach this page, and it will ask for your authorization for the the webcam. And we are uh, in the first mode with the machine learning API. And here, what you can do is try to trigger one of these emotions, okay? So that's not my API, that's the vision API. So let's try a, for, uh, uh, to be happy, hopefully. Yeah, so here it, it found that I'm uh, joyful with the maximum confidence. And if you remember, uh, the vision API is able to give me the location of the nose and the mouse, the eyes, so here, I've been mapping a mustache to everyone. Okay, um, let's try another one. Uh, so here I'm surprised at 80%. That's great, I should have, okay. Um, now I'm going to move and uh, with the delay on YouTube, uh, maybe, if you're doing it right now, maybe you will be in auto ML mode. So I'm switching to my own auto ML uh, API. So my own machine learning model. And if you go next, if you refresh the page, now you can try my model. You can try to stick out your, your tongue. Okay. So, so now in auto ML mode, you will have the Turkish uh, flag colors, uh, red and white. So here I have the tongue out. Uh, let's try to sleep. 
okay? It does recognize that I'm sleeping. But you could say that I'm kind of cheating, right? Because I have created this model with pictures of me. So, so yes, it's, it's normal that it's working. So now let's check out how it is working with you. I hope a few of you have been doing it. Yes. So we have a few happy people. I'm the only one surprised. So uh, yeah. And now with the auto ML model, uh, let me refresh the page. Maybe we have more coming now. Yeah. It's because of the delay. So yeah, I will keep refreshing a little bit. So people with the tongue out, it does work. You see people yawning, nobody. Okay. People sleeping, myself. Yeah, so I won't get more here. Maybe in auto ML mode, more. Okay. And finally, also, if you remember, with the Vision API, we're able to detect objects with the precise location. And so it means that here we have people with glasses. Uh, okay. A bit more now. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty easy to use. <laughs> um, I did that in two days. Uh, the data set, I needed two days to do the data set. Okay, let me go back here. How much time do we have? Yeah, a couple of minutes, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, one thing I want to mention is that to evaluate your model, you have to, uh, to know about the positives and the negatives. So the results that you get from your models and the results that you don't get. And if you expect them or not, if it works or not, then you get four different cases. And you've heard about the terms, but it works when you are getting true positives and true negatives. And the mistakes are when you're getting false negatives and positives, okay? Uh, there are more slides in, in the, the online presentation, uh, but it's time to, to wrap up. So what have we seen? Okay, thanks. Uh, what have, uh, have we seen? Uh, we've seen that there are three ways to use machine learning uh, as a developer. Um, the time you need to use the machine learning APIs, hours. Honestly, uh, all the code labs uh, that you'll get at the end, if you want to try them, in a few minutes, you can use any API and, and try the different features. So it's just in hours, you can maybe have a, a lot smarter solution. With a toy ML, uh, realistically, you need days because you need to create a data set. So maybe in half a day, that's what uh, I did. For my demo, I took four half days. So the first uh, half day, uh, I created the first data set and you, you need to understand how you need to, yeah, you need to classify to sort out your examples and so on. So I did it in four passes, but, but totally I needed two days uh, to create the data set. Then you need a few hours uh, to, to, for the training, and, and then you can use the API in your solution. For machine learning, if I was in my 20s, I am in my 40s, if I was in my 20s, I would do machine learning 100% 100 of my time, but I'm not uh, young enough anymore. Uh, maybe I would spend, uh, like for eBooks, I would spend uh, 17 years of my life working on, on this field. What is the difficulty uh, for the machine learning APIs? No difficulty at all. You just, you're just calling an API and using the results. For 2ML, as I said, you need to create a data set. And your machine learning model will, quality will depend uh, on your data set. Uh, so it's up to you uh, to, to do a great solution. AutoML is fully automated. Everything with state of the art, uh, stuff from Google. Uh, we're using TPU's dedicated hardware to do uh, a very uh, compute uh, intense uh, uh, training uh, with uh, the TPU's, the tensor processing units. Uh, so so you just have to focus on the data set. Uh, sorry, yeah, and that's it. And uh, and of course, if you, you want to work more on machine learning and that, and that would be with, with TensorFlow, for instance, or PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow has become a standard now then you will deal with everything, with the data set, the neural network. Uh, you can reuse, there's it's a full ecosystem. You, you can reuse a lot. Uh, so there are more slides uh, in the online presentation. Here are a few, few resources, uh, the documentation for the different products for AutoML. So AutoML now is a big field. It's going to get bigger than uh, the APIs and for TensorFlow. Um, I started to write a few articles uh, to give you some ideas. And every time here, I've been trying to solve a specific problem. In the first one here, 
so it's on medium on my medium account um i want you to be able to take a video and drag and drop the video in my serverless architecture and after the processing get a summary so here this is a, a video of a few minutes and i get a 10 second animation out of that automatically i don't have to do anything and i can understand what i have in my video here here is is the same still with the visual video intelligence api but i am creating animations of the different objects so here i know that there's an animal here in this uh, sequence in the latest article uh, that is face detection uh if you remember uh, we have detected the faces in the, the demo you just tried uh so here uh you can, uh, there's actually another uh, demo in line with the source code on on github and and you can that, try that out and every time it's in under 300 lines of code and every time also i'm using server serverless technologies so it means that my solution is somewhere in the cloud is ready to to be to be working and as soon as somebody is using it then an instance uh, is starting and and you can try the demo and so here's it is another article to show how you can launch a, maybe you you know you, you can launch a cloud function in uh, almost in a, uh, in a few different languages uh, in a few lines and you have something that is very efficient very easy to deploy uh, and that is very efficient from a cost point of view here this is a comic uh, that has been done by google ai where you will learn uh, it is very nice and you will learn about all the different machine learning terms that i've not mentioned here uh, and you will get a, an even broader view uh, on, on deep learning and machine learning. Okay. And finally, here are my slides uh, that you can use. Uh, they are ready. And if you want to send me feedback now or in a few months, feel free to come back to me. I'm also available on, on, on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. This is uh, my handle.